Okay, so here's how you will pull out the steps to get inside the RV. So all you gotta do is kind of lift it up like this and then pull it out. You need to pull it all the way out like this, okay? See, all the way out, and then see, it will lock right here. There's a little tummy groove right here. You can just lock right here. Some RVs have two steps, some RV has one. Okay, so this one, we have one step. So to put it, put it back, lift it up, and push and fold it back like this. Again, lift it up, pull it out, all the way out, drop it out, drop, drop it off like this, okay? Next, we're gonna go inside the RV, and then we're gonna uh, open the awning, okay? So, we wanna take a look at this side right here. We wanna make sure that the door is not in the way or anything is not in the way. We wanna make sure there's no trees, no branches, or anything like that. So usually there's a little door, door holder here. This one, I broke it accidentally. I, uh, there, there was, it was really windy uh, and I kind of just left it uh, holding by the little door holder right here. I will get it replaced, but this is also a very good lesson to be learned. When it's windy or when, don't, when you don't need the door to be held uh, at 90 degree angle, don't, don't leave the door holder here. You're gonna break it. It's like a tiny little plastic piece, okay? And you can break it very easily, apparently. So I'm gonna leave my door open like this so when the awning comes out, it's not gonna hit the door. So I don't wanna break the awning by doing that. So let's come inside. Okay, so we're inside, and usually you'll find your awning uh, switch right here. See right here it says awning, and uh, retract and extend. So I'm gonna extend it out by pushing this arrow right here. Okay, so I'm gonna start pushing. So I was pushing retract, so I had to push extend, I'm sorry. So. so you'll see that the awning start extending outside. Now the question is when to stop. It's actually kind of tricky, because uh, most of these kind of awnings on RVs, they like, they don't have like a like an end to it. Like it doesn't really stop. You just have to know when to stop, or else we'll reverse an engine and break it. <laughs> so when you see a flap coming down, that's when to stop. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of it. So let's go out. Let's just go out and take a look outside. Okay, can you see this? This is kind of the end of it. Okay. So don't keep going after you see this seam right here. Okay, if you keep going, like I said, engine doesn't know when to stop. You're gonna reverse the engine and ending up breaking the engine. Okay, so just be very careful. Now, most RVs are designed like this, so I'm not sure why they haven't improved the engine, but it is what it is. Okay, so now let's retract on it. Okay, come back inside. Now, to retract, it's the same. You just push the retract button, and it's just gonna keep coming in. Okay, there you go, you've retracted on it. Now let's take a look, uh, I wanna go over one, one little thing, okay? Is, you see there's a button that says exterior light. Now, this panel, this console panel right here is kinda like a universal uh, panel. So some units do have exterior light features, some units don't. So when you find it in the RV that there's an exterior light, uh, there's supposed to be a button like this, but there isn't, it simply means that this RV does not support that feature. So even though there says, it says exterior light, but there's no switch, then it means simply for this model, there, there isn't an exterior light, okay? So that's, uh, that's it for the awning. Okay, so next let's go over some of the buttons on your uh, little control panel, uh, look, like besides the entryway of your RV. So this button right here is battery. So when you push down on the button, it tells you if it's empty, one third, two third, or it's full. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, that's what it takes. So the battery, okay, so you can see if it's charged or if it's uh, not running out, okay? So let's just push the battery button and you'll see you have uh, three, almost full battery right now, okay? So it's gonna last about like, like at least a couple days, okay? Um, now let's take a look at the fresh. Fresh is your fresh water tank. Right now the fresh water tank is empty. A full tank, tank is 27 gallons in this RV. Okay, and let's take a look at the black tank. Black tank is empty as well. Uh, now a full tank of, uh, we have about 28 gallons of black water tank in this RV. Empty is gray. Gray also is also uh, empty. When it's full, you'll see the light. Okay, I see like three or four lights instead of one when it's full. Okay, uh, now this button right here controls the water pump. Okay, so the water pump, you only need to turn on the water pump when you're using your fresh water tank. If you're connected to city water, you do not need to turn the water pump on because the city water is pressurized, so it doesn't require. So if, uh, now if you have, uh, if you're dry camping, you're in the middle of nowhere, you don't have water, you don't have connection to city water, you might wanna uh, go with a full tank of fresh water tank, 27 gallons, and turn on your water pump. Okay, so when you turn on your water pump, this is what's gonna happen. So let's just say you're using fresh water tank right now. When you turn on your water, you're gonna hear this. That's your water pump. For people that are not from, from here, that have not used a water pump before, you're gonna kind of freak out. You're like, what, what's happening? Don't worry, it's perfectly fine, okay? Whenever you're using water, that water pump is gonna go. Okay, and then when you turn on the water, it's not gonna come, the water at, at first, it's not gonna come out flu very uh, smooth and fluently. It's not gonna be like, shh, like at home, it's not. And when you first turn on the water pump, uh, or use the fresh water tank, it's gonna be more like. And after about 10, 15 seconds, it's gonna flow very nicely. But just don't freak out when initially it goes go. 
on you. That is totally fine. Okay. Uh, so that's as far as all the buttons here. Okay. Uh, okay. So when you've uh, parked your RV trailer, turn on your gas outside. When you come back inside, uh, first thing you do is you're going to want to turn on your water heater. Okay. And the water heater uh, pretty much can stay turned on during the duration uh, of your trip. Okay. Just remember uh, when you leave, you have to turn off the water heater and then go back out and turn off the gas. Next, let's uh, talk about the stove. So how do you use like a stove in your RV? Okay, so unlike uh, your stove in, in your house, in your kitchen, which you turn the knob and it's kind of click, 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 there's like an igniter in there. So uh, a lot of the RVs don't have that igniter. So you're going to need a lighter here. Make sure there's enough fluids here, okay? And uh, these lighters are very easy to use. Everybody probably used it before. So all you gotta do is you release the gas and you hit the little trigger here. See that, it's a lighter, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're igniting it instead of stove igniting it. So I'm gonna push down on the knob, turn it, push down and turn it to light, okay? And it's gonna let out the gas, and then I'm gonna lit it with my lighter. So I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna have my lighter on, turn to light, let go, there you go. That's how you would light a uh, burner inside your RV, okay? And you can adjust the power, there you go. So if you turn it off, you'll be able to adjust the power if you want a smaller flame or a bigger flame, okay? So that is the burners. Okay, so let's go over uh, how to use uh, furnace. And uh, I'm not plugging into 30 amp power right now. I'm plugging into 15 amp, so uh, I'm not going to actually turn it on. But I'm just going to show you how this unit in particular works. And a lot of units in RVs uh, they work kind of the same way. Okay, so you have your button to turn it on. Okay, and then you have your temperature button. Okay, now these two buttons doesn't really have any uh, heating functions. It's just changing the lighting effect inside. Okay, so when it's turned on, there's going to be some lighting flames inside. This is changing the color of the flame, and this changes how bright the light is. Okay, so it really has nothing to do with the heating functions, just for sure. Uh, now, this last one is to control the temperature. Now, uh, when you turn it on, you can continuously push this button uh, to adjust how, 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 how hot you want the furnace to get. Okay, and then it only goes up, it does not go down. Okay, so, but it will go in a cycle. I believe when you hit about 100 degrees, it will jump back down to like uh, 72 degrees. And then you can keep rotating between 72 to 100. Okay, so usually like the, I like to turn on to like 75, 76, which is good, okay? So a lot of times when you set up your degree, you're gonna find that the furnace is not gonna like instantly blow air out. You're gonna, you're gonna set up the degree and you'll be like, hmm, why, why isn't it doing anything? Okay, because it still needs to start detecting the temperature inside the RV for it to trigger. So after you see the temperature, okay, uh, just let it sit for a couple minutes. It's gonna detect the interior temperature and start blowing out air very soon. Same thing with turning it off. So when you turn it off, the, if it's blowing and you turn it off, and the, 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 uh, the heat will not just like, like instantly stop. Again, it's gonna detect the temperature and then stop. So give it a couple minutes, it will stop, don't worry. Okay, so that's how you use the furnace. Okay, so uh, another item uh, that uh, will be good to bring is an additional electrical heater. Uh, so now, the furnace inside RV works perfectly fine. Uh, you'll heat up the RV, uh, you know, very nice and warm even under like freezing temperatures outside but uh, sometimes you know for example uh, my wife and my daughter like they they, they want to like to heat up like instantly they want to because when you when you come back inside the rv that's like let's just say the outside temperature is freezing when you come back inside turn on the furnace it's still probably going to take like i'd say a good 15 20 minutes to uh, heat up the entire space nice and warm like 80 degrees uh so while at the meantime while you're waiting if you want you can have one of these electrical heaters plugged in okay and then just hold it right like this to your face Okay, so it'll be worn out. Okay, instantly. All right, uh, while waiting for the furnace to heat up. Okay, cut. Next, let's talk about the refrigerator. So the refrigerator is probably uh, the one thing that will stay turned on, and it's okay to stay turned on when you're not plugging the power. You're using a backup uh, battery inside the RV. So there's a little battery at the front of the RV. That's your backup battery. Whenever you're not plugging into power, it's drawing all the power source from the backup battery. Now the fridge, as long as you have the backup battery, uh, as long as the backup battery has power, the fridge is turned on at this unit. Now some RV units, there's an on and off, off switch. For this one, there isn't. There, there, it's just gonna stay on when, when you have power, okay? So now uh, one nice thing uh, is, Let's just say you're, you're, you're going on a trip tomorrow and then tonight you're packing up some food, some uh, milk uh, or soda or drinks in the fridge. And it's nice to know that the fridge will be on uh, for the whole duration of the time. So let's say you have, you have meat inside, you know, if the, the fridge doesn't have power, you know, it's not going to cool the meat. Another thing is when you first uh, park your trailer at home, okay, it's let the fridge turn on for at least a day. So it cools up first. So this is like an RV fridge. It's not like your household fridge. It doesn't cool as fast as household fridge. If you don't give it time to cool, it's going to end up being like a cooler instead of a fridge. So to do that, now this RV is a 30 amp. Uh, there are also 50 amp RVs. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, RV you have, the power you have, you can always find an adapter. So this adapter is a 30 amp to 15 amp adapter. Okay, so what you're gonna do is your RV power, power cord, you're gonna plug in here to the 30 amp side. And then this side, it's a regular 15 amp or 125, 110V uh, outlet plug. So this, you can plug into uh, the ex exterior outlets in your house. Okay, so once you have that plug in, you have about 1800 watts of power you can use. Uh, now, uh, some of the things you don't want to use when you plug into your house is microwave 
uh, AC and heater. These are three big things you do not want to turn on when you're plugging into your house. Why? Because any one of these will easily draw about 1200 to 1500 uh, watts of power and then it's going to you know, uh, it's gonna flip your breaker, okay? So, just remember when you plug into your house power, uh, 15 amp, do not turn up, do not use the microwave, do not use the heater, do not use the AC, okay? But the fridge can run. The fridge usually, uh, depending on the kind of RV you have, it will draw about 200 to uh, 400 watts of power. So, uh, your household 15 amp plug uh, supports up to 18 watts, so it's pretty safe to use, constantly use the, uh, the, the fridge as well as turning on all the lights uh, and uh, the Bluetooth player if you have one, okay? So, that is fridge. Okay, so next I want to talk about how to use the toilet here. Uh, it's actually very easy. Um, kind of like uh, your toilet at home. Uh, before you use it, you kind of want to fill it up with a little bit of water. And uh, now if I just push this down right here, it's going to flush. So if you push it all the way down, it's going to flush. But if you just push it down just a tiny a itty bit, you're going to start seeing water come out from here and start filling up uh, your toilet. Okay, so when you have enough, you can let go and then use the toilet. And then after you're done, you want to step, step down on this pedal all the way down and it will flush. And that is how you use the toilet. So one quick thing I would like to go over when you're using a toilet inside an RV travel trailer or any RVs is to use a special RV uh, fast disposal uh, toilet paper, okay? So these toilet paper will not clog up your black tank. So it's safe to use these toilet paper and throw it inside the toilet and flush it away. Now, if you don't use these paper, tissue papers, a lot of RV owners don't use them, uh, what's gonna happen is the tissue paper is gonna clog up uh, your black water tank and then uh, your sensor will fail. So please uh, always use uh, RV toilet paper uh, you know, if you run out of it, you should have like a little trash can beside your toilet. Uh, you know, to collect toilet paper and just tie up the bag and throw it away. Um, now, uh, what happens? Let me explain what happens if you keep if, if you use regular tissue paper. Uh, it's gonna clog up the black water tank, clog up the sensor. Um, so if the sensor fails, you're gonna no longer be able to tell if your black water tank is full. It's either gonna always display as full or not display correctly, and it's kind of scary. Uh, so. Here's a good question. What happens if you don't dump your gray and black water tank? What's gonna happen if you just keep using it? Uh, for the gray tank, let's just say you're washing the dishes here. You see the drain right here inside the, the sink? You're gonna actually see your gray tank come back up, okay? Which is disgusting enough, okay? But for the, you can imagine your black tank, if you don't know when it's full and you just keep using it, or if you know that it's full, you just refuse to dump it, you're gonna see your black water come back up. And that is a sight you do not wanna see. Some things, once you've seen it, it's never on the sink, okay? So, want to definitely uh, make sure you use the right toilet paper and always dump the gray water tank when it's full, okay? Okay, so I want to talk about how to use a, a small shower inside a small uh, traveling trailer. So a lot of the small traveling trailers, even though they are equipped with the full bath, uh, it's, it's actually uh, not that easy to maneuver, okay? Because the space is so small inside, okay? Um, well, first of all, I am five feet eight. I'm not six feet, I'm five feet eight. And see how when I stand up, okay? My hair is touching the vent on the top. Okay, so now I can open up the vent, of course, to allow air circulation always. So I'm gonna open up this vent. Okay, so when you're taking a shower, you wanna turn it on. I'll open up the vent like this, all the way up. Okay, now next, when I have to take a shower or when my wife have to take a shower inside here, like what I constantly have to do is I have to squat down, kind of like this, okay? And then I kind of, I, when, I, when I use the, the shower head right here, I'm constantly showering and then having uh, the shower head facing that direction. So you actually don't want to face your shower head this direction, or in that direction, because the water is just gonna go slide on the sides of the wall, onto the floor, onto the bathroom floor, which will cause a mess. It'll make it very uncomfortable if anyone else needs to use it or if you need to use the toilet later on. Uh, where it's kind of, even worse, you'll see that there are no thresholds here on this door. So what's gonna happen is the water is gonna just start dripping all the way out to your RV and making a mess. Okay, it becomes very hard to clean. So the best thing is, uh, when you're using the shower here, constantly keep the shower head in that direction. So the water will hit this face most of the time. Okay, so you will be able to shower you know, all part of your body, okay? And then for your back, I would recommend do this. And the water is just gonna, you know, drop off on the back. You know, when you're washing your face, you don't have to like squat down like this, wash your face, and then do your hair like this, okay? On the under, whatever you need to do, okay? But it's, it's possible to take a shower in here and not cause too much of a mess, okay? You are going to still have water outside. You're gonna still get water outside a little bit. Now, if you have a kid at home, I strongly recommend you taking the shower for the kid, instead of the kid doing it. Because my kid, she is eight, and then she tries to take a shower inside here, it caused a mess, okay? Um, so when you're taking a shower, this is hot, this is cold, and there's another switch here. See this switch? So when you turn on the water, you also want to turn on the switch here. Push here, and then water will come out. And then you're gonna start adjusting the, heat, uh, the temperature, okay? Uh, so left is cold, right is, uh, left is hot, right is cold, and then you can set it to kind of like the temperature you want. Well, they, after you have the temperature you like, you turn it off here. So it's, the water will stop coming out from the shower head, okay? And then 
uh, you know, shower, turn it on, shower, and then turn it off again from the shower head, you know, put on your soap or whatever, whatever shampoo. Okay, when you're ready to uh, rinse it off, you know, you take it off because you set the temperature already. You turn it off again by pushing the button and then you'll, you'll be able to shower yourself off, okay? Um, so that is how to use the shower. Now, after you're done using the shower, uh, you're gonna ha want to have a couple of towels uh, to wipe down the floor. Because trust me, like right here, right here, and right here, it's gonna have a lot of water, okay? Uh, so you wanna make sure you wipe, you have a couple of utility towels to wipe down uh, this whole bathroom, okay? Um, uh, you definitely don't want to just leave water in, uh, outside, that's uh, uh, number one. Uh, it's, it's going to damage the RV on long, the long term. Number two, uh, your mold is going to start growing. So if you are using the RV for more than a couple of weeks, like one month, two months, you're going to start seeing mold growing in that. Number one, that's hard to clean. Number two, it's just not comfortable to live with. Okay. Uh, so uh, and it brings to another point uh, is to really level your trailer because when you get to a destination, if your trailer is not leveled, okay, you're going to you're going to start seeing water collecting in one corner of this pan. And if you're really not leveled, okay, this pan is not that deep, and then it's going to start coming out of the pan if you're really not leveled, which is hardly the case ever but it's still good to have your trailer leveled so that water will just flow to the string naturally when you have it leveled okay uh, so make sure when you use a shower curtain you know you kind of want to make sure the shower curtain is to the end of the end of the wall and then make sure the shower curtain does not lay outside the the top the lays inside the pen this is outside the pen okay it is all to prevent water from going down okay so i was able to take a pretty good shower in here now remember your hot water here only has six tank uh, six tanks of hot water inside so you can't really take a long shower you have about 10 minutes okay and you have to really do it fast okay uh so now uh when i take a shower to be honest with you uh i was able to use it uh with the right temperature uh on the first wash and then i would apply soap and shamp uh, soap shampoo why not and then hot water would start running out when I'm rinsing, okay? Because I take, I take more time rinsing, I wanna make sure I'm clean, okay? Uh, so, uh, and then you're gonna run out of hot water, you're gonna feel it, but the water is still, it's not gonna be ice cold. Uh, it's gonna be uh, a chill water that is bearable, uh, to, to my opinion, is bearable, okay? So you will be able to finish the shower, just know that at the very end of the shower, uh, it's, the hot water is not gonna last until the very end of the shower, okay? So let's just say you have five people inside the, the RV and all five of you need to take a shower, uh, the, water, the hot water tank, hot water heater, uh, it takes about 30 minutes to heat up all six gallons of water. So you're gonna have to uh, have a 30 minute intervals between each person. Okay, so first person is gonna finish taking the shower. You're gonna wait 30 minutes and then the second person will take just another shower and then another 30 minutes and then the third person. Okay, so that's how you would take a shower inside a small travel trailer like this one. Now, um, there are two vents inside this RV. Okay, so whenever you reach your destination, uh, I would recommend open the vents. And what you're gonna do is just turn the knob then you open the vent. So this is for good air circulation. If you don't have it open, you know, you're gonna feel very stuffy inside. So this one you wanna open, and inside the bathroom there's another one you definitely wanna open, okay? So it's kinda of like an exhaust vent inside the bathroom. Okay, so for air circulation, remember to open now. Another, the, the, the more important thing to do is remember to close it when you're ready to leave. So what happens if you don't close uh, your vent when you're driving, the cap on the top is gonna fly off, okay? And uh, it's kinda of costly to repair. <laughs> so wanna make sure that uh, you close your vents, okay? Okay, so next I want to talk about uh, the fuse box. Okay, so let's just say uh, by accident you pop the breaker, you know, you accidentally use too many appliances or accidentally turn on the microwave while you're using the AC and the heater. So all those watts will add up. Okay, uh, so in case you, you pop a breaker, it's just kind of like in your house, you have an electrical panel, you open it up, it's a bunch of breakers, you can flip, over, uh, flip back on when it's off. But that fuse box is right here. All you got to do is push it like that and then open it. And here you'll find all your breakers. So when the breaker, we can find it right here. There's GF, uh, there's a GFI breaker, your fireplace, AC, microwave, converter. Okay. So all these breakers, if they pop, okay, you just have to flip it back. All right. So, uh, in case you don't know, like the whole like concept of it, like uh, uh, the breakers, uh, it will flip is to protect you uh, from electric uh, from electricity. Okay. So uh, when, when when it's flipped, okay, all you gotta do is flip back. Okay. So there you go. That's the fuse box. Okay, so when you're driving, you're moving the trailer. Uh, so there's a little dining area here. And I set it up like this because it is best when it's when the trailer is moving. I'm gonna show you how to set it up, okay, when you get to your destination. Okay, you see all these uh, cushions? Uh, cushions, I have uh, put it upside down, okay? And there's a reason for that. Uh, because on top of these, you can put like a, uh, now technically the ideal way is to have everything inside the RV, inside the cabinets, inside the drawers already. But sometimes you have some extra luggage, for example, and you still want to carry your luggage case, you can put the luggage case on top of the cushions, okay? And let's just say you're, uh, at your destination, let's just say you don't need a dining table, but you would like to sleep five inside the RV. So as you see right now, uh, this queen-size bed will comfortably uh, comfortably sleeps two, and we have a bunk bed right here, one, two. So now that's four people right now. So if you would like to sleep a fifth person, this would be it. So all you gotta do, there 
there you go. So now you can select a fifth, uh, fifth, uh, you know, fifth person. Uh, so if you don't have five people, you uh, you can uh, you prefer to have dining area, uh, which is what I prefer, like dining area. All you gotta do, okay, actually, let's go this way. And see the Velcro here in the back? It's gonna stick, stick to the other side of the Velcro here. Okay, and for the table, you gotta lift this up now. I'm moving to the side. I'm going to unfold the legs. Okay, and then I'm gonna put, put it back down. kind of see why you wouldn't want to set it up when you're driving because it moves so if you have to set it up like this while driving this thing's gonna slide all over okay but when you're at the destination you can set it up like this all right uh, so one last thing I want to go over is uh, uh, while I pack this up so as you can see it's very easy like even if you sleep five people you know you can still use this dining area when you're not sleeping because when you wake up all you gotta do is just set up the dining area So, I want to talk about one more thing. Is sometimes you're traveling with a dog, and then uh, sometimes your dog will feel safer because a lot of dogs are, are feel safer when they're in their little crate. Let's just say you have a little Chihuahua or uh, a Pomeranian or anything like that, a Beagle. You know, uh, when it's in an RV and you're out there hiking or fishing, uh, your dog inside the trailer might not feel safe because things people are gonna be walking around. You're gonna have like a, a kids running in the RV park, stuff like that, and your dog can feel extremely scared. So a lot of times uh, you would want to travel with your crate. So this area right here makes kind of like a perfect space for you to put your crate. Okay, so when you're inside your RV with your pet. Uh, the crate can sit outside the RV, or if you have one of those foldable uh, wire crates, you can fold it up and just put it here, uh, you know, right beside the counter, whatnot, not where, where space allows, okay? Um, and then when you know you're going to be out for the whole day, for example, it's July 4th, you know there's going to be fireworks, okay? Uh, you know your, dog, your dog's going to be crazy, and you really probably don't want to leave it inside the RV trailer where you're watching fireworks, okay? You know your dog is going to prefer, uh, your dog's going to feel safer in uh, the crate that you brought from home. So that, that's a perfect time where you can just set up the crate right here, and then watch fireworks. Come back and your beagle will still feel safe inside a crate. Okay, so that's as far as how to use the dining area. So a lot of RVs come with an uh, audio system here that is connected to the RV. So you see on the ceiling right here, there's a speaker, speaker on this side, and there's another speaker here. Okay, um, when you turn it on, just push this button here. Okay, and then if you want to use like a Bluetooth to connect it to your phone, you would push this button right here and search for it in your phone. And uh, there's also the radio functions that you can play radios on this. Okay, so it works exactly like uh, what you will find in the car. Okay, you'll find uh, a lot of times these units are in the car. So it works exactly the same. Okay, so if you want to Bluetooth pairing this to your phone, you can. Okay, okay, so let's talk about the AC real quick. So in the summer is really hot, you want to turn on the AC. All you have to do is turn it on with this button. Okay, and then you can adjust the temperature up and down. Okay, uh, so this is a timer function, which I never use. Uh, and then this is like uh, uh, some other functions, auto cool, dry fan, no, I just leave it, usually I just leave it in auto. Okay, but uh, it works very similar to a lot of the home uh, household uh, wall mount uh, ACs, but very simply, uh, uh, you, to use it, just turn it on, adjust the temperatures you need. Okay, now on the top, you can kind of adjust how you want the air to flow. Okay, you can adjust the air to flow on one side or the other, you can also turn it up and down, okay, like this. Okay, so that is how you would use the AC. Okay, next uh, I want to talk about uh, one thing that will make your uh, journey more enjoyable. So a lot of the RVs nowadays have a place for TVs. So you see right here it says LCD TV mounting bracket location. Uh, now I find it to be not, not a very design decision to mount a TV on the wall, especially inside an RV, because when you're driving an RV, inside this trailer it's constantly having an earth earthquake. It's constantly shaking like and then it doesn't matter how strong uh, your TV bracket is. Trust me, in a, in a year's time, it's gonna be loose. You're gonna have to replace it. And you're gonna have to mount it somewhere else to drill new holes. You're gonna mess up this wall, okay? And then it's really just not safe because it's just gonna be very wobbly and shaky when it's loose, okay? So mounting, uh, now, I, no, you, you're gonna meet people that said a mounting TV here is definitely a good idea. They mount it for years and years and nothing happened. But you know, for, for me personally, myself, I just think like, why not just set the TV somewhere safe? Because look, this space right here, will at most give you like a 24 inch TV, which is a tiny little screen here. When you have plenty of space here on this counter, or even better, right here next to the bed, to place a bigger TV, for example, a 32 inch, 
Okay, uh, and in my opinion, a 32 inch TV is like kind of like a perfect size. Why? Because anything bigger than a 32 inch, you're not going to be able to easily pick it up with one hand and you know maneuver it. So, a 32 inch TV, you'll be able to easily pick it up with one hand. Okay, and what I like to do instead of mounting a TV on the wall, which is going to break eventually, I'm going to take up the legs. I like to just set up the TV on a flat surface. So you can see a 32 inch TV is very light, okay? And uh, I'm able to pick it up with one hand. See that? So now a 24 inch TV is even lighter. But anything bigger than a 42, you're not going to be, picking up, be able to pick it up with one hand, okay? So this is an LCD, not a plasma. You definitely don't want a plasma. I don't, I don't, you probably can't find a plasma, plasma nowadays. On plasma TVs back in the days, you know, you can't really flip it like this, kind of mess up the whatever liquid inside, okay? But LC, LCD, you can do whatever you want. Okay, so now I have the legs on there. I can just set up my 32 inch TV very nicely right here. Okay, so if you're watching TV or playing video games or hook this up to your phone, you know, uh, there are cables that you can use to kind of connect the HDMI in the back and then connect it to your phone in the front. You'll be able to uh, watch whatever Netflix, YouTube, uh, with your phone, but project it onto the TV. Okay, so that's how I would use the TV inside the small RV trailer. Okay, so uh, next I would like to talk about all the storage space inside this particular RV. And then the storage space that I go over right now, a lot of RVs are built the same way, so uh, you'll be able to find the same kind of storage space uh, inside another small travel trailer, okay? Uh, so let's begin by uh, first coming in. You'll find the storage space here, okay, inside. Uh, some people like to put a trash can here because it's kind of like a kitchen. And then uh, under the bed, right here, I can open it up. Okay. All right, so underneath here, Okay, pretty big space here. And then on the other side, it also has more storage space. Okay. And underneath the table are also storage space. Above the dining area, we have a cabinet right here. And above the dining, uh, above the kitchen, we have cabinets above. Okay. Hello, underneath the burners, we have uh, uh, three drawers. Okay. And then right above the bed, there's a shelf. Okay, so that is all the interior storage space that comes with this counter. Okay, uh, so uh, I want to talk about safety features out of a lot of RVs, okay, which is the CO uh, detector. So this is the carbon monoxide detector. So just in case like you know, uh, leaking gas or uh, this, this will sound, this will alarm. So that's what this is for. So right now it's green, it means it's all safe. Okay, so when you're staying inside an RV, you don't have to be scared uh, of uh, CO poisoning because anything close like that ha ever happens, this thing will, the alarm will sound, okay? So next I wanna talk about the smoke detector on the top. So this um, the RV also come with a smoke detector here and uh, it can be annoying sometimes because let's just say you have a walk here and you're gonna, and you're gonna do some very heavy cooking tonight. Uh, usually a small rig like this, really not recommended uh, to do heavy cooking. You know, a small rig like this is really meant for you to cook breakfast or pack up a couple of sandwiches. It's not meant for you to cook a big meal. And honestly, uh, after a very tired day, uh, you know, you're, you're outside, you're hiking, or uh, you're fishing, whatever you're doing, when you come back to the RV, what you really want to do is rest. You're not back here and then, you know, uh, cook a big meal, have to clean up. You know, that's not what this small RV is for, really. But if you want to do that, that's all up to you. And let's just say you're doing some crazy Panda Express stuff. You have a big walk here. You're doing this stir frying and whatnot. You're going to have a lot of smoke, okay? So we have a lot of smoke. The smoke detector is going to turn, it is going to uh, sound. Okay, so what you need to know, uh, don't do heavy cooking here. Uh, if you grill, you grill a steak, grill a steak outside. So right here, uh, let's just say you, you start getting some smoke, okay? And uh, I really don't recommend doing this, uh, but if this thing is just going off like crazy, what you can do is pop it open like this. See that? It pops open. You just have to do that, okay? After, after it pops open, you can remove the battery, okay? By adjusting this clip right here, and you can take out the battery and it will stop making noises, which I strongly don't recommend you do, okay? And so this is for like when, when it's really like by accident, you're cooking, there's some smoke, and this thing is just going off like crazy, and you really want it to just be quiet, okay? So just remember to put the battery back, and that's it, okay? That's uh, the safety features. Also, we have a fire extinguisher here, okay? So I've never heard of anybody actually need to use a fire extinguisher, but uh, it's very easy to use. If you ever used one before, you pull this, okay? You pull this, and you push down here. That's how you use it, okay?